Hi everyone, I'm Ava and that tiny, tiny little fluffy ball in the corner is my cat Chunky. And today we want to tell you four practical things that the Dutch do better. So when I say practical, I'm talking about everyday things. It's just that practical was an easier way to sum everything up. But what I mean is everyday things that you would do or use. So yeah, practical things. And when I say better, I'm comparing things in the Netherlands to things in the US, which is what I was used to before I moved to the Netherlands last year. And better is of course subjective, but I wanted to share these experiences to see what my fellow Americans think. And I wanted to get the perspective of my Dutch viewers and European viewers. So let's get started. Number one are grocery stores everywhere. So before I talk about how there are grocery stores on every block, well, maybe not every block, but really very many grocery stores in a short, small radius. But before I talk about that, I want to make clear that my experiences are coming from living in Dutch cities and American cities. I have very little experience outside of the city life, but at the same time, I've lived in cities in both countries, so I do have a point of comparison, and I just wanted to share my experiences. So I am from New York, I've lived in Washington DC, and before I moved to the Netherlands, I lived in Philadelphia. So I have the Northeast US experience, and over there, I found that there were full neighborhoods where there were grocery stores missing. I'm sure that this would be a surprise to any Dutch person because here what I found is if you walk for 10 minutes in any direction, you will find a Albert Heijn or a Jumbo or a Dirk van der Broek, one of the many grocery stores that you have in this country. And oftentimes you'll even find them right next to each other. Whereas in the US, like I said, there were full neighborhoods where you just didn't have anything. And in those cases, people need to drive in order to go to a grocery store. Now imagine if your car breaks down, that means you can't go grocery shopping that day. So yeah, that makes people totally reliant on a car if you are living in one of these neighborhoods. If your car breaks down, you don't even have food. Okay, that is probably the more extreme cases in cities in the US where it is more difficult to go grocery shopping. I mean, I'm saying this out loud and I just think I can't even imagine this happening here. So it sounds really ridiculous to me, but it's just true. So there are of course cases where it's not that extreme, but it's still really inconvenient. In many neighborhoods and in neighborhoods that I've lived in, it's not uncommon to have to walk 20 minutes in order to go grocery shopping. And of course people don't really bike. So you have to walk those 20 minutes in order to get your groceries. And if you're American and own a car, you're going to use your car instead of those 20 minutes that you could walk. That's often what people like to do. It's also a little bit easier, but you know what would be easier? If there were more grocery stores. So all of this to say that since I moved to the Netherlands, I have been spoiled. I don't plan my grocery shopping during the week. I just stop by the grocery store whenever I feel like it. In Utrecht, there's even an Albert Heijn at the station. And recently they even opened a Jumbo City. So I don't even need to go out of my way in order to go grocery shopping now. So my life has improved in this fundamental way. So the second thing the Dutch do better are their trains. That is the second way in which my life has incredibly improved. So public transport in the US leaves something to be desired. I'm not saying it's crappy everywhere, but I'm saying it's crappy a lot. Let me just give you an example. In New York City, when I would take the subway, I wouldn't know when the train would be arriving. I would just be waiting there on the tracks, waiting and waiting. And yeah, it could arrive or it couldn't. You just needed to have faith in the, the MTA, the New York City public transit. And let me tell you, we do not have faith in the New York City public transit. There are now a couple of subway stops where you can see when your train is arriving, but it's still uncommon. At least the last time I went there, it was still the case, which was about a year ago. And okay, that's the local transit, but if you wanna to go to other cities, you need to use the Amtrak. And the Amtrak will take you long distances out of the city. Now those trains are pretty comfortable, but they are also expensive. I mean, if I want to go from Philadelphia to New York City, the cheapest ticket I can get is for $40. Now this is the cheapest ticket. Normally you can end up paying $50 to $60 to just go to New York from Philadelphia. In comparison, if you take the bus and don't plan ahead, you just show up at the bus stop, get a last minute ticket, you could get it for $15. I've taken a bus from Philadelphia to New York for $1 through the Megabus. But 
That's besides the point. The point is just that the trains are so expensive. And I kind of alluded to this earlier, you need to reserve in advance. There's a very low chance that you could show up to the train station and get a ticket to go long distances. Whereas here in the Netherlands, I cannot tell you how much I have come to value this. I can simply show up at the train station and get on a train to another city. Like last weekend, I took the train from Utrecht to Den Haag and I was there in 40 minutes. There was a train every half hour, I didn't need to plan too much. And it was also not that expensive. And in the Netherlands, it's also really common to have a subscription to get discounts. So for five euros a month, you can get 40% off when you travel non-peak hours and which includes the weekends. But in the US, that doesn't exist. You pay full price. And if you book far enough in advance, you could get a somewhat less ridiculous price. But what people end up doing is just taking the bus or driving because it's so expensive to take the trains. And I know I said that American trains are comfortable, that the Amtrak is comfortable, and that's true, but Dutch trains are more comfortable. I really particularly enjoy these four person seats. They are the best. And you could just sit there with your friends and not feel awkward about yelling over each other in order to have a conversation. It's all very gezellig. The third thing that I think the Dutch do better has to do with mobile banking and money transfer. Now this may seem like so not an exciting topic, but I am now excited to be able to transfer money from my bank account to other people with ease and also receive money, but mostly transfer. Because in the US, when you wanna pay somebody, it is a pain. I am not exaggerating. I used to pay my rent with check. I had a physical piece of paper. Do you just people even know what checks are anymore? They're pieces of paper where you write an amount that you owe somebody and then that person needs to go to a bank to deposit that check. I needed to do all of this just to pay my rent and this is not uncommon. So in the US, I just had a checkbook, like a fancy person from the 1980s. And I cannot emphasize enough how very, very common this is. Whereas in the Netherlands, I simply have an app for my bank. I type in my landlord's name and every month they get the money from me. It is so simple. I do not need to leave my couch. I do not need to make sure I have checks. What's a nice bonus often is that some of the banks have their app that can scan a QR code. So if you wanna shop online, you can simply grab your phone and scan this QR code and you have your stuff. You don't need to fuss around for your credit cards. So I will say that that has become easier for me. And of course I have to mention Tiki, which is an app that you could use to pay your friends. Now in the US, there is something called Venmo, which is a similar app, but Venmo is mobile money. So if I were to pay my friend, my friend would get Venmo money from me and that money needs to be transferred into their bank account. So there is that additional step where you build up Venmo money and then you need to transfer that money into your bank account. So what ends up happening in the US is that people accumulate a lot of Venmo money and they just pay people with Venmo money. So there can sometimes be a large sum of money just sitting in your Venmo, which is kind of annoying. It's not a huge nuisance because before Venmo, things were a total mess. Like we needed to carry cash and pay people in cash. And I'm not talking about like 10 years ago because Venmo hasn't been around for that long. We'll say that I don't know how long Tiki has been around for, but the good thing about Tiki is that you simply transfer money directly into that person's bank account. And what's good for me and the way in which my life has improved is that I don't have anything called Tiki money. My money is just in my bank account. My money is my money, it doesn't belong to some app. And finally, number four, the last thing I wanna share with you guys today is I love how the Dutch like to schedule everything. Everything, everything, everything. And in particular, I find that my social life has improved because I'm able to schedule social events because that's just something the Dutch like to do. If you are non-Dutch and watching this, you actually schedule appointments to see your friends. And the Dutch even have the same word for appointments and seeing your friends. Whereas Americans call it hanging out, the Dutch call it appointments. Afsprake. So if you wanna hang out with a Dutch person, you need to make sure that they have room for you in their schedule. And a Dutch person doesn't just see you for that day. They might see you for coffee from 4.30 to 5.15. Then from 5.15 to 5.30, they might be on their way to see another friend for bottle from 5.30 to 6.30. And then maybe they're meeting another person at seven. The Dutch like to schedule and plan their social events. 
that's just how it works here. Now at first, as an American, I found this really difficult to get used to. I was just used to my friends being free. So I would send them a message and say, hey, do you want to hang out right now? And they would either be free to hang out or not. It was also not uncommon on a weekend night for me to simply ask my friends what they were doing and then we would decide if we wanted to hang out or not that day. Yes, the Dutch people watching this, even on a Saturday night, we don't have plans per se and we make plans spontaneously. Now, I'm not saying the Dutch cannot be spontaneous. I'm just saying that they like to plan their social events out. And even though it took me some time to get used to, I'm saying that my life has improved because of this. And it's, this is really interesting and I am not qualified to tell you the human psychology behind this. But my experience has been that because people don't plan, they often just assume you're going to hang out at some point. And I would go weeks without seeing some of my really good friends. I might see them at work if we work together, but because we didn't really plan when we were going to see each other, sometimes that just wouldn't happen. So since I've moved to the Netherlands, I find that even though I have less friends here than I did back in the US, I actually do more things because I schedule more things. And on the non-social side, I got a calendar. I'm really excited about this. People in the US do have calendars, but I didn't and I never had any problems with missing appointments or seeing people. But just because almost all Dutch people have a calendar, I know I'm generalizing here, but really I have yet to meet a Dutch person who doesn't have a calendar. But because it's so common, I decided to get a calendar and I really like it because now you can invite people to your calendar. I know it sounds like I'm just being introduced to the 21st century, but hey, I'm saying my life has improved. Anyway, so those are my four practical things that I think the Dutch do better. And also four ways in which my life personally has improved since I moved to the Netherlands. Anyway, I wanna hear what you guys thought about these things and wanna hear your opinions and your experiences in the comments as always.